China Mobile AI Strategic Policy. China Mobile aims at having AI full coverage on key capabilities in products, creating perfect technology innovation system, promoting the deep convergence of AI in the real economy, accelerating national innovation construction. AI application pioneer, following the principle of high goal, high starting point, high standards. China Mobile proactively designs AI layout as it emerges by introducing AI capabilities in several fields like network operation, customer service, product innovation, and management improvement. China Mobile builds leading ability in intelligent operation in intelligent service, becoming AI application pioneer in the industry. AI industry enabler. Facing the future, China Mobile constructs the intelligent information infrastructure system, which combines perception, transportation, storage, calculation, and processing, enhancing intelligent application ability generally, and becoming AI industry enabler. With an international perspective and a desire for ICT convergence. China Mobile participates actively and contributes a lot in open source communities. Faced with the next generation network, China Mobile is introducing open network automation platform Onipe, which is the intelligent brain of SDN NFV to realize automatic network orchestration and management. CMCC outputs several influential use cases such as Volt, such as VOLTE and CCVPN use cases to Onipe, collaborates with other active members in the community and continuously contributes code to core projects. As the biggest open source community in LFN, Onipe expands rapidly in the last two years, owning more than 100 members and over 70% global users. By taking advantage of the strong orchestration ability of Onipe, intelligent scheduling, agile deployment, dynamic adjustment are changing into reality. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for all the support. So the topic I will cover today is a practice on, um, where's the title? Uh, the network intelligence and open source, the practice and thoughts. I feel like which um, every conference you go, no matter is speech, natural language, and which, no matter is which industry, kind of all we all united under artificial intelligence. So um, I feel lucky to be the first one to talk. I don't need to worry about. It. I'm gonna repeat someone else's points. So um, will be two parts. I will share some practice inside Time Mobile, also um, how we see in the industry. And, uh, and then I will, second part, I will share some of our thoughts. I'm thinking it's, are the things that we, I think we can collaborate on. Um, okay, if we look at the uh, standard organizations, there's um, uh, tremendous work recently done, uh, try to put AI into the standards from 3GPP, from ITU, from ENI, and also others. So without going through the details, and we can see where the industry is going. So if we look at the uh, LFN uh, members, if you talk to the um, top officers, the developers here, um, so, you know, everyone seems to have some part of to do with AI. And uh, we have a couple of keynote talks on DevOps. I'm thinking is we, um, for now, at this moment, we have invested quite a lot on AI ops, and it's next step of DevOps. I think it's no matter it's the web skill, internet companies, uh, so techos or vendors all invest heavily on AI, how to use the artificial intelligence technology on operation. Okay. With that, uh, from SDU, from the industry in general, I give you idea how uh, the AI uh, R&D looks like in China Mobile. What is our strategy? So um, we don't see us as a kind of core deep down technology inventor. Uh, what our strategy is driven by value, because we have been 
um, into big data for a couple of years. I mean, we all think big data will lead to big value, which is not necessarily true. So when we come to the um, era of AI, we think it's uh, we have to derive the value, the commercial value from the technology. So we are value-driven AI strategy. We're trying to push out to the largest scale applications to improve our business, improve our productivity. So come to details. So we have our uh, general platform, AI platform, support R&D and uh, production um, company-wide. And then we have the bottom, the infrastructure for the hardware, how managing the clouds, and then have the layer called uh, common capabilities on top. It's uh, what do we focus on is the three major areas. It's uh, artificial intelligence for network, how to make our network intelligent. And the second part, the marketing, service, security, and management. Um, I don't think I will go to details, but I will focus on the first one, the network. Just give a couple, um, there, there are tons of work to be done. So I'm thinking I will just mention what, what, how, what's the systematic view of um, that work looks like. So um, for network intelligence, we put into three layers. If you look at the, uh, the outside circle, which is the intelligence service, um, you can, we can do, the, for, for example, the business management industry services, uh, how we improve our user satisfaction. Um, those are on service layer. Um, we think it's easier to do compared to inner ones. If you look at the middle ones, it's intelligent operation. I think we all uh, put in quite lots of efforts uh, into um, the lines of business. And the, the core one is how we make our core, the, the foundation of the network intelligent. Uh, the routing, slicing, energy, how to save energy, how we uh, use AI uh, to make Mac uh, intelligent. So given that overall view, and I share a couple things, just take a few examples to give you a sense of what we did. For example, for customer care, we have this chatbot um, in deployment since 2014. Of this is a chart how we improved from last year. For now, the the robot, 100% uh, of the robot to handle the customer uh, care volume, 22, almost 23 point percent. Um, and this is a way uh, we evaluate our. Uh, this not just the accuracy of how uh, we um, interact with our customers, how accurate it is. It's more of how many channels we put in, how much, how many chats we have per month, and uh, the the uh, rejection rate, our accuracy, how that impacts to customer satisfaction. That's how we evaluate the technology its own. Um, on the bottom, it relies on speech recognition, rely on sentiment, rely on lots of NLP, natural language processing, speech technology, knowledge base, data analytics, um, and some part of uh, computer vision technologies to, to integrate everything into. And we have a closed loop circle, and uh, every single day we have data annotated, have the data, have our performance evaluated and confirmed by human, and come back and we um, upgrade the model on, on a daily basis. Um, that's the first one. Give you a second example. It's a little uh, uh, more relevant to a network. So we all get um, um, consumer and customer complaints come in. That's uh, um, a big worry of all techos. Uh, so this one, what we did is from the customer give us the call, we get the speech, we transcribe, we transcribe into text, and then we analyze the text and analyze what the problem, the concern is, we extract all the facts, then we combine those, and then we that's part of the understanding what the user's complaint, complaint is. The second part is we tackle into all the major data we need to connect with and trying to analyze what the problem is, how to solve it. So basically, so we build a network um, operation um, maintainers kind of knowledge base, and we also connect to all the data. I have layered here, there are many of them, you can imagine they're a heavy layer of engineering 
to connect all the data points to make the decision smart. Um, this has been deployed in large scale and save us quite lots of money. And uh, another one um, is connected to wireless. It's intelligent coverage, coverage uh, optimization. This is a back office tool used inside Time Mobile. Um, a couple other things for future networker, next generation. They are not in large scale deploy yet. Just to give a couple example. This one I presented last year with Huawei and Vodafone and the cross layer, cross carrier uh, VPN. And this year, we show this demo we also partially de deployed in China Mobile is we combine this uh, ONAP and, and AI um, uh, on the edge. So basically, it's a scenario is you um, imagine you have a security monitoring system that you have, your, you detect if there's abnormal speech or a signal, um, sound signal, and then you, uh, if there's um, extreme situations from the from the picture from the from the video, and then uh, we notify um, uh, ONAP and then adjust the bandwidth automatically. So it's it's getting AI to initiate the orchestration. Um, so this is the AI for network slicing. This is one of our main thing for uh, for developing to prepare for 5G. Um, this is AI for smart edge. Without going to details, I think for this community, there are tons of work uh, in the community and inside each of the companies. Um, this we're thinking how we can systematically put AI into ONAP uh, for the uh, data analytic part to close the loop. So I gave a couple examples, but which is I don't think it's an important part of my talk. Uh, the uh, so, uh, to summarize, we have a lot more, uh, hundreds of AI-enabled systems functions now we have developed and deployed in the past couple of years to help improve the complex network. Um, there are too many, just so I just give you a sense. Uh, so, they're in Chinese. Um, that's uh, intentionally I want to, because it takes lots of time to translate them. Uh, I don't think uh, they're... It's a key point to show them. So then, then what, what's the problem behind? We built, we spent lots of energy and, and human resources building this intelligence system to help a network. We see what we get. It's, it's a great technology. I think it's a way of AI. It's transforming us. It's transforming the industry. Um, so we are also at this moment, uh, last month, last week actually, we announced that we are hosting a nationwide network intelligence competition in China. Uh, so whoever are interested, you're really welcome to, to give it a try. Um, and I think the second part is really I want to share with audiences here some of our thoughts, what we can take what we have as a now for network intelligence to the next level. So what we, we should do, what is the problem? Um, so first one, what is, what is this a, a correct and definition for network intelligence? So even people saying they're, they're not, so we all talk about AI, but everyone's AI is different from others. So for me, I give you my personal definition, what is artificial application? So we can, you can have, well, AI means lots of technologies. You can machine learning, deep learning, transfer learning, reinforcement learning. You can have lots of learning. You can have a knowledge base. You can have inference uh, algorithms. I'm thinking in the way, so when you put integrate everything together into an AI-based system, the system has got to have a feature. It can improve it itself on its own. So I'm thinking and that's, it has to be a living thing. So if you have the system the performance today as one, and tomorrow, it's, or a week later, if it can become 1.01, it improves on tone. It has a, um, a sign of as a living body. So I'm thinking that, that kind of application we call AI. If you deploy technology, you never touch it. It doesn't improve on its own. Even it has speech recognition, even has image processing. I, it uses AI technology. I don't think itself is AI application. So I give you a, a definition of my personal view, um, but I'm thinking is we truly need a, 
definition for network intelligence too, because there are just too many uh, cases, scenarios uh, in our business. So we can put it into, we can use AI. AI definitely helps, but there are lots of efforts on, on kind of low level, high in food, how we can improve that. Um, um, it's, um, it's, uh, I would think if this gets clearly defined, it will be a big help we take the intelligence to the next level. Um, the second one is, can efforts be systematic? I show you what we have done um, on the transport network, on the core network, um, on run, on, each, on the operation, on the services side. So, so I'm thinking, where, how can make it more systematic? So we can, uh, if you compare this concept to, to uh, the levels of, um, um, automatically driving cars. So you can, from the easy to hard, what is level one? What is level five? So where, where we are now? And um, the second way is we think um, it's, it's uh, the service, the, the operation layer, the uh, basic, the foundation of the network. And wireless to core network, wireless transport in the core network. And uh, we all know for, for the tech industry, we need lots of planning and we construct our network, we operate, we optimize the network. In different phases of this, we need AI to come in to help. What those AI technologies it look like, what the framework should be, I'm thinking it's still an open question. And, um, um, when we do AI, we need the steps. You need to sense what's the data and it gets the data, how we can do the sensing right. So when we, we are proud, we get lots of data, but lots of data definitely means, a big data means a big cost. Doesn't necessarily mean a big value. So how we can correctly, in, in a cost-effective way, to sense our network, the qualities of the network, to sense the user experience, and how we correctly store the data, analyze the data, and then do the prediction. Um, those are open questions. Um, the third question I want, um, hopefully we all can work together on this, is uh, what level we should share um, data? So we cannot imagine the data process, the image processing, the CV, the computer vision um, technology can come to uh, where it is now without image data set. So we need a, for AI, everyone knows it's, it's data to generate intelligence. So where the data come from? You know, what way should come? So data is an issue. If you look at the other research papers from the network literature, you can see uh, most of the researchers are used to use the data from many years ago. Doesn't really necessarily represent the problem of what do we face in our industry. So that's a big gap there. So th that's why we host this competition in China. We invite developers not to share some of our data. We also you come to our our own computing platform. You can run your things for the big side of the data, a chunk of data, you can come to our platform to run your computation to try things, try your own algorithms. Next level is model. You can, uh, we all know now that intelligence is a narrow sense and it's not a general uh, intelligence. It has to for a specific problem. But on the model level, how we should share well, it's pretty hard to share. If I have a speech recognition model, I give it to you to run recognition, probably it's easier. For network, it's we don't know which level, which problem, uh, we can share that on model level. Another way is, for now, uh, for the last year, the big thing is in the AI field is BERT, B-E-R-T, the pre-trained model from Google. Basically, it's, it gets a level of um, natural language processing to find a general way which can get the meaning of the words of the sentence in a, in a way from large amount of data. And you can take that model, they call pre-trained model, basically to catch the basic semantics of words of sentences. And then for the, all the downstream tasks, you no matter you do um, sentiment analysis, you may you do customer care, dialogues, whatever you do, you can use this pre model and easily tune for, for whatever the specific application is. So I'm thinking in the telecom uh, intelligence world, do we have this level of abstraction? Can we build this kind of model? Is it possible? If so, how we do it? So the third level is um, 
since for network intelligence, um, if you get the data, the data is static. So lots of problems needs to that needs an environment, not just data. So what that environment should be, and uh, should we collectively build that one to uh, foster the research and R and D, and even inside a corporation, where that environment should be open to the developers. Um, the problem abstraction I showed you, uh, you can build millions, hundreds, thousands, millions of ap applications, but you cannot um, handle the costs. You have to pay so much for building those capabilities. So I'm thinking if we, if we look at the typical problems, if we do a level of ab abstraction, we get to know what's the nature of the day of our problem. We face a classification, it's a decision, what, what's the foundation? What's the nature, basic nature of the problem? If we get that layer of abstraction, I think we probably can build something general to fit all the scenarios versus we're building one for each. Um, so, and, and another way I'm thinking is, we now we uh, borrow the algorithms which are originally designed to, to process natural language, to process speech, to process images, videos, but they are not fundamentally designed for network problems. Are they perfectly okay for our own problem? Or we need something special? You cannot imagine without image processing, there's no convolutional uh, neural network. There, if there's no speech, there's no LSTM. So the problem itself probably can lead to another level of invention for, for AI. I'm running out of time. Uh, so efficient way to improve collaboration between industry and academia. So I have, this, I have seen this really big gap between what the industry is doing, what researchers, professors are doing um, on our research. Is there open source? Is open source an easy way for this level of integration compared to the commercial software? So uh, fifth question I want to share is, um, AI is not only that piece of technology, it impacts um, our own way of um, we run our business. So methodology and process to efficiently deploy AI enable function. I mentioned the closed loop, how to make your AI system really a living thing. It's not only algorithm, it's not only data, it's your business process has to close that loop to give it a life. And the sixth question I wanted to share is way of business and organization, how to match this new technology. Every piece of technology, especially, I think it will transform the way we think and then also the way we run our, we organize our folks. The last one is I hope our network can be simpler and I hope AI will help here. Okay, that's all my content. Thank you. <laughs>